All right, everybody. Sorry about the wait here. We had some uh, technical issues, uh, but uh, we're all set. We got Patrick uh, all ready to go. Uh, so um, uh, you guys know who Patrick is. Uh, we've had him a bunch of times over here. Uh, and um, uh, 34 years old, living in Hawaii, living the dream, uh, and uh, riding big waves and riding the stock market. Uh, he's been trading for about six years uh, and documenting his journey through the daily markets on his YouTube channel. Uh, here is his YouTube channel. Here's special offers from Patrick. Uh, so uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, I'll put these links into the chat for you. So if you want to uh, uh, reach out, uh, I got to go through some disclosures and there's a special offer I want to go through. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. We're having a Black Friday sale uh, continuing through the rest of the week. It will end on this Friday. Uh, if you guys haven't tried Bookmap or you want to upgrade your Bookmap, this is the chance to do it. Uh, it's for half off, 50% uh, off for the first month. Uh, so give it a try. Uh, I'll show you where. Just go to bookmap.com. Uh, right on the on the home page here, uh, you'll see the uh, uh, the image here. Click on it. It'll take you to the landing page here. Bookmap.com/slash/blackfriday. Uh, and uh, here's the promo code uh, BM Black Friday. Uh, choose which one you want here: Digital Plus, Global, or Global Plus, uh, and uh, go through the process. Very simple. All right, so uh, uh, it does not include data. Uh, it's for the software, uh, but uh, if you want, if you've been itching to try Bookmap, this is your shot. All right, so let me turn it over to Patrick, and uh, let's get going. All right, all right. There you go. You're all set. All right, we're here. We're live. Sorry about the uh, difficulties there, my friends. Um... We're good to go. I had a little technical difficulty there, but we are live on the book map. All my fellow YouTuber uh, people on here, but we're also live on Discord as well. So you can check out the Discord. Book map's got a lot of information there on Discord. So right now, looking here at the book map, what do we got going on? If we zoom out, we know that 60 area is support. We've been kind of just chopping around this 60 area. A lot of liquidity being traded here at the 70s. You can see session volume profile here. A lot of liquidity sitting there right now at the 70s. So we'll see kind of how this plays out. If that 70 area is going to act as resistance and we're going to move down. We're kind of still, I mean, we're pretty much still flat from where we opened at. I mean, we haven't really made a big move up or down. We've been just kind of chopping around between that 60 and 70 level. We were kind of worried that we would kind of just get choppy here with this action right now. We dipped down there 61s. You can see liquidity kind of sitting down there 61s right now, but I'm thinking I'm thinking as long as they can hold this 60 level, we just gotta get pushing back up. The problem is it's just been not having that follow through. We had the numbers come out there at 10 a.m. and the market really didn't react very much. And we had a little bit of a move, but not a big overall reaction to those numbers. So Kind of just sitting back here, waiting to watch. You got the iceberg order down there right now, sitting at the 62s, trying to push up, eat some of this liquidity at the 60s. If we can get above this 70 level, I think, get above 72s. We got that next area of resistance there at the 75s coming up. I'm still, I'm still just kind of sitting back, waiting and watching to see what happens here. If we're going to get this push through the 75s next. That VWAP right there at the 73 level. We have not been able to push above that VWAP yet. We keep touching it and getting denied. So let's see what happens here. If this thing's going to want to push above 75 here. Ideally, we get a push above 75, we get a little pullback, we turn that VWAP into support, 
and then that would be kind of my entry level where I'd want to be getting in at. So we push above VWAP, pull back, turn VWAP into support. Definitely looking like it wants to squeeze up here. The SPY right now, we got that pivot at the 397.40 level. Pivot on the SPY, so the idea of wanting to push up there. The iceberg orders are basically orders on the that are not on the book. They're liquidity on, I guess, orders that are coming through buying, but they're not showing their size on the book on the actual level two. So you can see like there's that iceberg order that's sitting down here at the 6250. There's a little iceberg order there that just popped up. These little blue lines, you can actually adjust that as well so it doesn't show the smaller ones, but I talked about it before on previous book map videos. You know, I like to keep it really simple. My big thing for me is kind of keeping an eye on that volume profile over here on the right, and then also just kind of keeping an eye on these levels. We know that VWAP's right there. VWAP of the 73s. Again, we touched that VWAP, did not push above that VWAP. So let's just keep waiting, being patient here, and get this push above the VWAP. We get the push above the VWAP, we turn the VWAP into support, and then we get that breakout to the upside here. So well, that's kind of what we're looking for. For me, I'm literally using uh, just the stops and iceberg, and then the liquidity marker. It's kind of showing us where that liquidity is being added at and where it's being taken away. You can see, like, these if it says plus 25, plus 25. That's basically liquidity that's being added, uh, you know, as this is kind of unfolding. The nice thing about the book map is it's a very like dynamic, very visual tool over just having level two. You know, if you're just sitting here and you're looking at the the order book, like over here on the right, like pretending that there's no, you know, if there was no heat map and you were only looking at this, you know, it's like. What do you what do you really see here? And if, if you're only trading off of the order book, if you're only trading level two, I mean it's a totally different experience, at least for me visually. I like the visual aspect of having, you know, the heat on the map there and just kind of displaying it differently. Obviously, we can see that there's a lot more liquidity when we add all that back for the contrast, but for me. I just really want to know like where those bigger areas, those big pockets of liquidity you're sitting at. So market trying to hold here at the 70s right now. I'm thinking we get a push up here. We got to get above that VWAP though. Get a push above that 75, above the VWAP here at the 73s now. The NASDAQ lagging the ES, the NASDAQ down still in the red right now the nasdaq down 0.15 uh 0.15 right now in the red and the es is in the green if we get above this vwap here look for that breakout and try to get a push up to the 80s next over 75 push up there to the 80s i think and then uh, like 82 level so just sitting back waiting and watching here All we really need to do is just push above VWAP here. We've touched VWAP. We've touched the. We're getting very close to that VWAP level. Now let's see if we can get that breakout. I think that long earlier off the 62 level was a beautiful long opportunity. If you got in there at 62 earlier, I guess that was like right after those numbers came out. No, actually a little bit later. So. You can see a lot of liquidity sitting there at the 75s. So ideally for a long entry, we're looking for a push up. We break through that 75 level. We pull back. We turn the VWAP into support. And then we look for that move up from there. So Right now, the SPY getting above the VWAP. The ES right there at the VWAP. I love that VWAP, baby. We got the roosters crowing. 
Um, so I'm using the overall, I'm using the view op. That's basically all the info from overnight. And there we go. Trying to push VWAP here. You can see taking out that liquidity going 75s now. Beautiful. Doing exactly what we thought it would do. Based on the book map and the action here. Pushing up there to that VWAP now. We want to see this thing get through that 75 liquidity. We break through 75. We turn the VWAP into support. We're having trouble right there at the VWAP right now. So give it a little bit of time. Get this break out here. If you're using Thinkorswim, you gotta you gotta get a new broker, Lulu. Get get a new broker. Thinkorswim. Ooh, 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 ooh. Especially for futures. If you're trading futures, you gotta get a broker with rhythmic data. You can see the big difference with the rhythmic data. You just get better price action, better deal, um, better data coming from rhythmic. You get the the book, the MOB orders on the book there with the rhythmic data. I mean, like I talk about this all the time. Like I use, I use the book map pretty much. If I once I enter a trade or once I, you know, figure out that I'm gonna get in long or get in short, I'm I'm pretty like keeping my eye pretty close on the book map at that point. Like I'm pretty much like keeping a, a hawk eye on that book map at that point. Right now at that VWAP, you can see some liquidity coming in here at the 71s right now, trying to hold us up there. If we can get through that 75, I think we can try to push here, but we gotta get above that VWAP. I wanna get a push above VWAP and then turn it into support. Right now getting stuck there at the VWAP, not, not what we wanna see happening from a long standpoint. But I don't think this is a short just yet. Watch the 71s here. We got a lot of liquidity, a lot of action here, a lot of volume in this 70 level. So let's see if that's going to act as support. Right now, 70s trying to hold there. 70s holding. Get this push up above 72. If you guys haven't already hit the like button, blow up that like button. Come on, fam. Let's go. 200 likes or more. It's free to like. We got 72s acting as the resistance right now. They're using that, the shorts are using the VWAP as a nice spot to be shorting, so. There's that push through the VWAP again, looking good. There's that squeeze, look at that, right through the VWAP, beautiful. So now we're looking to get long in this level here. Let's just kind of give it one second to see what happens with this three minute candle. A lot of, look at that big iceberg order came through there. That stop got ran right there. Look at that. They had all those stops right there. Look at that. 423 contracts got stopped out there. Whoops. Those shorts that were using the VWAP as, as their uh, stop just got stopped out there. And back below VWAP. We still haven't had a close above the VWAP. We want to see that candle close above VWAP. Or see that price action, you know, sitting above VWAP, supporting it. Don't want to just jump in a little fake out there, a little stop run. You can see how a little spike up there, like 76s, all because of that, those stops getting ran there. They ran them stops. All right, so we're getting ready to have that three minute candle close here. So I'm watching that three minute candle where we're going to close at. We can close above that 73, 74 level here. That'll be above the VWAP.
and kind of watching right here. We got about five yeah, seconds left on this three minute candle. I'm gonna take a long right here, 73s. Left on. See if we can't push up with a stop below 70s. Look for that push up above the 80s now. Trying to take out that liquidity at 76 is beautiful. Can we go through it all the way to the 80s? Put my target at like 78, 79 level on this trade. Not going to be too greedy. Stop below the 70s, right below this liquidity here on the book map. Need to start pushing here through that 76s. Turning that VWAP into support now. Beautiful. That's what we wanted to see. Remember, we talked about this whole entire move before it even happened. We talked about that push above the VWAP. Turning the VWAP into support. Getting through that 75 level. There we go. 76 is now trying to push. If we can get some momentum to come in here. Volume. Everything's setting up beautifully to get above this level here. 76 is up to the 78s next. And get that pivot point on the SPY. There we go. Look at this. Here we go. 78s coming up. Come on. Let me get that 78 push. 77s. Trying to push it, trying to push it. Still got my stop. Moving my stop to, we'll go, let's go right below this liquidity there, 71, 25. So we're long from the 73s. Looking for this push up through this level here to the 80s next. 77, 8, 77, 50 there. Pushing up now, trying to get through that level. It's interesting to look at the book map, see the liquidity levels, and then look at the candlesticks on a chart with no heat map. And it's funny because you like you'll see the candlesticks kind of pushing up, kind of getting stuck, and then you're looking at the book map and you can see that liquidity sitting there, and you're like, oh, it's very like interesting. I don't know. It's interesting to kind of see how those candles are reacting based on where that liquidity is on the book map. And now we're pushing 78s. Here we go. Looking to take profit into this push up here. If we get through 78s strong, get to the push up of the 79s. And let's go. Let's go. The 79s. Give me 79s here. Looking to take profit into that push above 79s here. We got 78s there. Beautiful. We got that liquidity there at the 80s. And let's looking for our 78s. To push through over 80, we should go to the 83s. And there we go, getting filled 79. Beautiful, nice little trade from the 73s to the 79s. What's beautiful about this is we literally had the entire trade set up before we even, before we even. Enter that trade. We already had our whole plan, had everything all lined up. There we go. Look at the 83s coming up next. Like I said, that push above 80s coming strong. We're getting pushed up that pivot now. The only reason I didn't hold on to that a little bit longer was we're right there at that pivot point. So expecting a little bit of a pullback here, unless this just goes straight through that pivot next. But not a bad move from the 73s to the 79s there for an easy six handles. And now pulling back here from that little push up, got to the, I think we got to the 80, almost 82 there. Or I think, yeah, the high was 82. That's, you got to, oh, 81.75. Pretty damn close. So if you took that trade from the 70s, nice little move up there, 80s now. And that was all just, like we said, we, what were we looking for? We had the whole thing all planned out. We were looking for that push above the view op. We're looking for that pullback. To that VWAP, you can see we pushed above the VWAP here. We pulled back, and then we are looking to enter on this little pullback, turning that VWAP into support, and then do 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 all the way up there to the 80s. So nice little trade there. I love I love when those trades work out like that, where you literally predict. I wouldn't say we even predict it, but we have a plan, right? The plan was we looked for that push above the VWAP. We are then looking to enter once that VWAP is turning into support. 
And then based on the levels here on the book map, I was like, okay, look, we got that liquidity there at the 80s. My target's gonna be right below that liquidity. And that's exactly what we did. There's no like guessing, there's no you know, FOMO. It's just, this is what we're gonna do, this is our plan, and that's the trade we're gonna take. Sam, in the uh, YouTube, made uh, $450 there, nice. Rusty Goffer hitting his goal for the day. Everybody making money. If you guys haven't hit that like button, blow up that like button. Come on, let's show the bookmap team what the Patrick Whelan YouTube subscribers are all about here. If you guys are on the Discord as well, if you check it out on YouTube, we got all the fun stuff for there. But look at this pullback now. Beautiful. You got to love that too. You got to love when you take profit and then it pulls back. And like I said, that the reason I thought it would pull back there, we saw that liquidity on the book map, but also we're right there to pivot on... Um, on that, Andrew made $700 from that 73 push up to 79. Beautiful. You got to love it. Everybody's making money. $650 to uh, Laliti. Alejandro made 160 Wow. Everyone's getting rich over there. Let's go. Uh, Russell made $750. Wow. You guys are killing it right now. And just to think, this is all free. Sam Wise got in at 74, out at 79 for 250. I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to be careful telling you guys where my targets are. You're going to start adding liquidity to where I'm trying to sell at. Got to, got to keep you guys. Keep you got I gotta I gotta sell before everybody else starts selling. <laughs> so right now pulling back there beautifully. You gotta love that. You just oh. I don't know about you guys, but I get excited when I get a trade like this where it's so easy to just kind of have that plan. This is something I talk about all the time on my YouTube channel. I talk about you know on the live streams. Keeping it simple. I mean that was a simple, easy trade. We didn't do anything but just kind of wait for that push above the VWAP. We turned the VWAP into support. We had the levels all lined up. We had support there on the book map. We had everything. Before we even placed that trade, before I bought, I knew exactly what I was going to do. And that's, I mean, that's literally the best trade you can make. You got to love it. Right now, pulling back here, 77. So I'm happy taking profit there at the 79s. Yeah, and it hit that it hit the pivot point on the spy perfectly. Another another tool I love, those pivot points. If you guys want to check out Bookmap, they got a great deal going on right now. 50% off for the Black Friday sale. There's a link there in the chat box to learn more about that. They've also got the Discord. They got Bruce over there. They got all the team always sharing a lot of info. I've learned a lot from Bruce myself when it comes to Bookmap. I've done some little private webinars and got some tips and stuff from the man. The legend over there but if you guys want to learn more there's definitely a bunch of info there in their discord it's all free big community of people that are all trading and um the action over there but right now just kind of looking to see what happens here i think we're a little overextended we pushed up to that pivot point now if we're thinking like what are we thinking level wise or what are we thinking for this to be another opportunity i think if we pull back Pull back and we touch, touch down to you know that VWAP again. We turn that VWAP into support one more time. But then you know really all we gotta do is just wait for that next breakout. The only issue we have going against us is that we have the pivot points right there at the three ninety seven uh, three ninety seven thirty level on the book. I mean on the spy pivot wise so that's acting as resistance right now we're pulling back here the spy we got the view up on the spy at the 396 level so i'm not really interested in buying the dip i don't really like buying the dip i'm not a dip buyer i like to buy momentum you know when when, when the market's pushing that's what i like to be buying 
I don't like to be buying when we're dipping down because the problem with buying the dip is sometimes that dip just keeps on going, dipping and going lower and lower. So my big thing is just kind of waiting for that market to get that breakout, show momentum, show strength, and then, and then I look to make money. The only thing I would say right now, the issue, well, not the only thing, but the other issue as well is you got the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ stuck right now at the VWAP on the 15 minute chart, got stuck there. So, momentum looking a little slow here. That was a nice little ramp though from the 70s up there to the 80s and then now pulling back. We're right between kind of some key levels as well. We got that support down there at the 60s and then we got that resistance up here at the 80s on the ES right now. So pretty much right in the middle between those two key levels. And we know what happens in the middle. The middle is where the chop happens and that's where the market kind of bounces around and doesn't give us those clean moves. So let's just sit back and be patient and kind of wait for that next good opportunity. If you guys haven't already, let's blow up that like button. 300 likes, we got 240 likes, we got 566 people watching. Let's go on YouTube. If you're on YouTube right now, blow up that like button. Sitting here right now at the 77s, trying to bounce, getting a little bit of support. We had some previous resistance here at the 75s, turning into support right now. We got the VWAP there at the 73s. I'd say if we can start to push back above 80s here, we should try to get up there into the higher 80s. There's a lot of resistance there. So it might take a few attempts. It might be kind of a push up, kind of pull back, push up, pull back, kind of a little uh, choppy action until we get through that key level. Problem is even above 80s, we don't like, uh. you can see here above the 80, we got that 90 level resistance Liquidity up there, 90s, and let me see. Not much, not much above that 90 level, to be honest. So we got 83 resistance, uh, liquidity sitting there, some overall liquidity here in the 80s, a little tight action here. Just mostly that support down there right now at the VWAP. You can see they added liquidity right there. That that liquidity coming in there. That dark color. If you're new to Bookmap, the way that it works is the where the you know the darker red is, the more liquidity. The only thing that you have to understand though is that just because there's liquidity there does not mean that it's going to be guaranteed support or resistance. You know we don't know for sure if that liquidity is. You know, shorts trying to get covered. Is it longs trying to take profit? So you don't really know for sure exactly what that liquidity is doing. We just know that there is action there. The market moves based on supply and demand. People think that the market moves based on time, but the market doesn't care what time it is. The market's moving based on, you know, supply and demand levels. The thing is, like, retail traders aren't moving the market. So the only way the market really moves is if big, you know, the big banks, the big firms are holding these levels, moving the levels, and that's what's really moving the market. The market's not moving based on what time it is or if there's a five-minute candle or a three-minute candle. The market's moving based on liquidity. It's based on supply, demand, and that's what Bookmap really illustrates, that supply and demand zones. So, we got 268 likes here on the stream right now on YouTube. I think we can hit 300 likes today. I think we can do it. It's happening. Right now, that liquidity is sitting there pretty heavy at the 78 to 80 level. We can get pushing here. Like I said, there's just a lot of kind of resistance. Not a terrible entry for a long here kind of in the 76s risking i'd say if you're 
trying to get long here. You kind of risk off the VWAP down there at the 73s. I probably I don't think I'm gonna take that trade, but that would be not a terrible opportunity here. I just don't like that we're right there at that resistance. I'd rather it break break that resistance first and then we look for an entry later on. Trader Joe, how's this been working for you? It's working great, my friend. Been using Bookmap for about four or five months now. And it's crazy because I literally am using the Bookmap every single day. Just earlier, we had a beautiful trade from the 73s to the 79s. And a lot of that, you know, was all because of what we were seeing on the Bookmap there. So the VWAP is going to be a little different. If you don't have the Bookmap open, I have the Bookmap open pretty much all the time. So that VWAP is going to be a little bit different. If you don't have the book map open, um, it's not calculating all that data. I think maybe Bruce can answer that later, but it's one thing that I've noticed. Sometimes if you just open the book map for the first time, like right when the market opens, the VWAP will be a little off, kind of what my other VWAPs are. But my VWAP is just pretty much a standard VWAP. And that's that little, you can't really see it right now, but that's that line. I should maybe put a better color there. Maybe. Oh, let's change the color. What color should we do? Uh, da, da, maybe not black. Maybe blue. Blue line. Look at that. VWAP settings. So the VWAP settings. So as you can see, like uh, reference points. So like it started 1900 Eastern when I started the session, so. Lots of, uh, lots of customization options as well with Bookmap. So depending on your broker, uh, Rhino, if you have, depending on what broker you're using, if you already have, if you're already paying for rhythmic data through your broker, you can use that same login, that same rhythmic data login for book map data as well. So there's that pullback 75s touching down on the VWAP again. Like I said, I wasn't in love with the idea of getting long here at this level just because of the resistance and everything that's going on up there. We got that pivot point market not really showing a ton of strength right now. Overall momentum kind of slowing down here. So see what happens here if we're going to bounce off that VWAP again. That blue line being the VWAP. We got some support there at the 73 area, 74s. Trying to hold up here. We got the MACD bullish. Eh, try to get this move up. That volume weighted average, you gotta love it. I really think that the, at the end of the day, if I had to pick one indicator that I could ever use the rest of my life trading, it would be the VWAP. If I had to get rid of every other indicator that exists and I could only use one indicator, I would say the VWAP. The VWAP has to be probably the most powerful indicator that's out there. Cause I, and I know that for sure because like when I, when I went to the New York Stock Exchange and I was like walking around talking to the floor brokers and stuff, one of the brokers, they, you know, they're, a lot of the algorithms that they use for buying and selling is based on the VWAP where like they basically, if they have a client, like there was a broker who basically the client wanted to buy, I think like 300,000 shares of uh, a company, but the deal was that they didn't want to pay like more than 1% over the price of the VWAP. 
at that on that day. So they didn't want to buy, you know, 300,000 shares and then spike the price of the stock. They basically use an algorithm that every time the price gets close to the VWAP, the algorithm buys. So they're constantly just like, if the price moves the VWAP, they buy, you know, and the same thing with this, they do the same thing with the sell orders as well. Like if you have a big order to sell and you don't want to really move the price of the stock, but you want to, you know, get good price, but not crash the stock. Well, they use algorithms that basically sell every time, you know, the, the value, the, I guess, whenever the price is near the VWAP. Right now, trying to push up here through the 78s, holding that VWAP, yeah. VWAP, you gotta uh, take a shot every time I say VWAP. Thomas, will we see green today? I think I think it's very doable here. Our market's already in the green. We got that pivot point on the SPY at the 397.40 area. If we get above that, well, 30 area, if we get above that, that next pivot on the SPY is 399.42. So you got about a $2 move on the SPY if we can get above that pivot on the SPY right now. We're above the VWAP on the SPY. We're above the VWAP on the ES. Right now, the only thing I think that's hurting us is the NASDAQ is lagging the lagging NASDAQ right now. The NASDAQ's right below the VWAP. Um, should algorithms be illegal? I don't think so. I mean, the algorithms are just, they're just computer programs that are buying based on certain parameters. And the thing with that, like trading futures, like I don't care if the market goes up, the market goes down. All I want to do is be a part of the movement. So if I see that every time we touch the VWAP, we're bouncing, well, that's a good reason to get long. The volume weighted average price is the definition of the VWAP. It's a mathematical equation. Every indicator on the chart that we use is a you know mathematical equation. It's all algorithms basically based on different parameters and different numbers doing math basically and putting lines on the chart. Right now, trying to push back up here, getting that breakout over the 80s coming next. Got that liquidity stacking up right now. You can see how the 80 is trying to add that liquidity there. That darker red line just popped up there. But that, like I said, that, that doesn't always mean, you know, that we're going to get stuck there. It just means that there's more and more liquidity getting added there. And that can be, you know, somebody trying to just sell their long position. That can be, you know, shorts with their shorts have their stops sitting there. Let's see what happens. Got that resistance here at the 80 level right now. We're getting tight, really tight. You got to think we're only from the 73s up to the 80s, about a seven handle move. And that's how tight we are with the VWAP right now. If the NASDAQ, I think if the NASDAQ can break out over the VWAP here, we should be able to get moving. But the Problem is the NASDAQ's lagging here, getting stuck at the VWAP. If we get push above the VWAP here, strong on the NASDAQ, I think the ES is going to go straight up. Straight up here. Trying to push 80s, trying to push 80s. Just kind of sitting back, being patient. Like I said, kind of in that, like Roy Jenkins just said, tough area. Tough area here, resistance wise. Momentum kind of slowing down here, just kind of sitting at that area right now. I got the VWAP. The NASDAQ once again getting denied at the VWAP here.
NASDAQ getting stuck there. And that's bringing the ES down with it. Kind of happy that I didn't take a trade here. Kind of happy, a little happy. A little happy. Um, normally on the book map, I'm kind of zooming in and out. It just depends on like what I'm looking at. Like if I'm in a trade, I might be you know pretty zoomed in, kind of seeing if they're adding liquidity, taking away liquidity, things like that. But um, just depends. Thomas, would I recommend placing a call? I would. Uh, uh, uh. This is not, obviously not financial advice, but I think you're better off just kind of waiting to see what happens from here. Market not really showing that momentum to push higher here through that level. We should have broke out above 80 right there if we were going to go higher, I think. So possibly getting a pullback here. Maybe pull back to that 60 level again. The market's been pretty choppy these last few days, so... I was thinking that those numbers this morning would move the market a little bit more, but they didn't really move the market much. And we're losing the VWAP here on the ES now, so not a good sign. Momentum showing weakness here. See what happens at the 73, 75 level now. We know that 75 area was resistance earlier. Well, Christopher, if you look at the MACD, you can see that the momentum was failing, was basically decreasing through that move. So I wouldn't say that the MACD failed. I would just say that you can see the momentum was clearly slowing down there on the MACD. So I think the MACD did its job. Market bouncing around here at the 70s right now. I'm thinking we maybe test that 60 area again. Um, the only problem, I can't really show my settings because, oh, maybe, I think if I try to open this window, it won't show. Let me see. Yeah, see, my I can't show my settings, but they're all pretty much exactly the basic settings. Um, I haven't really adjusted anything. Definitely looking like we're uh, gonna head lower here. The NASDAQ looking really weak right now. And you can see we're below the VWAP here. They're adding liquidity. So there's liquidity here at the 70s right now. And then below there, whoa, not much going on. So if we lose that 70 area, I would say we move down here to the lows again. Moving down to the lows again. Remember, if you guys haven't hit that like button, it's free to hit the like button. Let's blow up that like button. Let's set some records here today. I don't know what the record is for the most likes on a live stream on the Bookmap channel, but let's just go for, for big numbers, baby. Big numbers. Big numbers. Starting to push back up there, 73, 75 level right now. Watching to see what happens here. We got the VWAP acting as resistance now. So the VWAP, remember earlier, the VWAP was acting as support. Now the VWAP is acting as resistance. So something, something, to, ugh, something to think about there. Somebody asked about getting long at the 65 level. See, the problem is like we don't really know 
where the bottom is. So the idea of just sitting here and going, oh, do I want to get long at 65? I mean, we really don't know until we get there. Based on the fib. Yeah, and like I said earlier, like I don't I really don't love um buying the dips. But yeah, that 786 level would be right there at the 66, 65 level on the ES now. But I'm just I've never been a big fan of buying the dip. Because you know what happens. The dip sometimes just keeps on dipping. But the nice thing is, you know, when we have momentum and we're breaking through levels, the market's showing momentum. Well, you know, normally momentum will have have continuation. Christopher said that breakout. I see. I feel like being a dip trader is a hard is harder than being a breakout trader. I don't know, personally, this is the way, I guess the way that I trade. Nasdaq just bounced off the five ninety level, squeezing back up there. So pretty much we're turning that previous area of resistance being the 70s. If you remember earlier this morning, that 70 area was resistance. So we're turning that into support right now, actually. Trying to get back above the VWAP here. See if this is going to be able to push or not. Really just need to get the we need to get the NASDAQ above the VWAP. Somebody call the NASDAQ, tell them to get above the VWAP. All right. We got 333, 300, 330 likes. I think come on, we can go, we can go all the way, baby. 400 likes today. I think somebody said that the record's 500 likes. I think I think it's doable. I think we can break that. I like to break records, baby. Market right now at the 73, 72 level here at that VWAP, having trouble. Momentum overall not looking very bullish right now with the MACD crossing there and kind of the spy sitting right at the VWAP as well. The spy at the VWAP, the ES at the VWAP, the NASDAQ down there right now at the 590s below the VWAP as well. Got that liquidity sitting there at the 70s. Pretty much right now, all I'm doing is just waiting for something to, to get me excited. Right now, you know, the idea is that if we just if we just go and we buy and we sell and we buy and we sell all day long without really kind of waiting and being patient, like you're going to end up losing money. So the goal for trading really is just to be as kind of patient and as calm as possible. And then wait for those good opportunities. You know, we had a really good opportunity earlier when we got that breakout over the VWAP. You know, we had that plan. So now, like, why force ourselves to try to trade this? Like, we're pretty much just chopping right now. We're just going sideways. When the market's going sideways, we don't trade it, right? Like, if there's, if the market's not showing us strength, if the market's not breaking to the upside or to the downside, there's no reason to trade it. James Hansen, there you go. Not trading is better than taking a losing trade. I mean, the thing is, like, not taking a trade is a trade, right? Like, knowing when to not trade is part of trading. Like, knowing that you're not always supposed to buy. You're not always supposed to sell. Like, you're just supposed to wait. And that's literally part of trading. Like, that's 100% a skill set when it comes to trading, is being able to know when not to trade. Like, I would have so much more money if I just didn't take all the bad FOMO over trading trades that I've taken in my life. <laughs> I think we would all be rich if we didn't take the FOMO trades. It's always the FOMO trades that end up screwing you up. Always. I'd be a billionaire if I 
didn't if I never took a FOMO trade. And it's funny too, because like you always like you know exactly like what you're doing wrong, and you end up going on tilt, you end up over trading, you end up forcing trades, and you know it, like you know it, but you're just like you get to a point where like no matter what, you're just so focused, you're so fixated on like winning that you just end up hurting yourself even more. I think this breaks through 70s. We go back in the 60s pretty quickly here. Yeah, I mean, it's also, it's fun, right? Like it's, I think there's that emotional kind of reward of like placing a trade. Your body, your mind gets that dopamine release. You know, it's all the emotions, right? When you're in a trade, you're like, if you're in the green, you're happy, happy. And then if you're in the red, you're like also kind of getting that dopamine release. It's funny because I, like, I talk to people who are traders and they tell me like, oh, you know, I, whenever I enter a trade, I'm like, you know, I, I don't have emotion. I'm like, you know, you have, emo everyone has emotion. We're not computers. We're human beings. You know, everyone's going to have emotion. But I think the best thing to do is really just being as patient as possible and removing a lot of that emotion. You know, that trade earlier that we took from the 73s to the 79s, I mean, there was no emotion behind that because we had a plan, right? Like we knew the plan going into it. There was no FOMO. There was no emotion. There we go through the 70s now, down to the 66s. Like I just like rewind the tape, rewind the tape, baby. We just said that through the 70s down there to the 60s now. So looking like we're going to roll off here. Looking weak right now. The ES just gave up the VWAP, the NASDAQs. The NASDAQs really kind of leading the way here to the downside. NASDAQ's literally just dumping right now. Like really dumping. The ES following. I say we go 62. Well, oh, there's 62s. Wow. Not sure what's happening, but some seems like something's happening right now. Something's happening. The market's moving. 61, 62s. We're getting some, look at this thing. All, there was no liquidity. Remember, there was no liquidity down there below that, below that 70 level that we saw earlier. And this is exactly what's happening now. We're just going right down there. So... Luke Rogers, I appreciate the compliment, my friend. I appreciate that. And there it is, down to the 60s. I think with the low, actually went into the 50s, didn't it? 59s. 58.75 being the low there. Let's see if they're going to defend that 60s again. We'll see if liquidity starts coming in here on the book map, trying to hold it up. Try to push it back up, 65s. Also, if you haven't tuned in, we're live every morning at 9.15 a.m. on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to come join the fun. Every, uh, pretty much every day, live at 9.15 a.m. Right now, pulling back here, 60s. Oh, they just dumped it. You got to love it. That VWAP, that VWAP, man, I'm telling you, that VWAP literally acted as resistance there. And then whoop. once we lost that VWAP, it was over. So. Nice little move. If you guys have any questions about bookmap, you want to learn more about my strategy here, let me know in the chat box, in the comments. Try to get to those. Get to that. Um,
Yeah, Patrick, I can I can answer that <clears throat> question on the VWAP. Uh, yeah. So uh, the way it works in Bookmap is uh, once you open it, you start collecting data. Uh, so uh, it will start the VWAP calculation at that point. Uh, so uh, uh, typically, what 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 I do is uh, you know I'll start my my Bookmap in the morning uh, before the cache open, and then I have it reset. You can reset it at the cache open, uh, but uh, that's what I do. So I, I get the notification a lot too. that says like my uh, memory's like full. Is there like, where do I clear out the memory? Um, under the settings uh, and then um, you'll, you'll see the performance down below. Uh, yep. Yeah, there's some, some memory uh, allocation in there and some yeah, aggregation, uh, automatic aggregation as well. So um, yeah, you, you can set it in there uh, and um, uh, how, how many symbols do you typically have open? Just just the ES? Just the ES, but it says like it's basically like it says like your memories. Does it is it storing every session like on the on your hard drive or is it? Uh, you you can um, make a recording of it uh, and then you can replay that in replay mode later if you like. But uh, uh, that shouldn't um, have much to do with your memory at all. It's much more. About yeah, well, it's not, and I like it's, I guess like my storage. It says like you only have like you know. 100 megabytes left of storage <laughs> ah well then then maybe it does um yeah i th i don't think i was recording though but i'll figure it out yeah you can you can open up under file uh and then you go down to open up um yeah user folder right there yep yeah and then you'll okay. see under feeds uh if you have a bunch of files there you can delete yep them. There it is. And then uh, what you can also do is on Bookmap Startup, uh, you'll see it like record setting. It, it, there's a checkbox there when you start. Yeah. Bookmap. Just deselect it. There we go. Down to the 50s now. Through the 60s into the 50s. We lost that VWAP. That was pretty telling that once we lost that VWAP support, we were going to just go lower and lower there. So somebody asked, do I use the Bookmap? Um, do I use the book map for downside risk? Yeah, I mean, I like like we said earlier, like when we entered that trade at the 73s, my stop was right below the liquidity level that was at the 70s. So that's what we were watching. Now, right now, the market just tanking. Wow, this thing is gone. I mean, I say we're going to the 40s from here. From this 50 level, we go to the 40s. It might take a little bit of a choppy action to get down there, but I'm thinking we'll go 40s here today. 51s now. Look at that sell. I mean, we got stuck there at the VWAP, kind of double top there at the VWAP at the 73s, and then ramp right down there to the 50s. The market takes the stairs on the way up and the elevator on the way down. We need 40 more likes on the stream, 40 more likes on YouTube to hit 400. Come on, let's go. Watching to see what happens here at the 50s now. Finding some support there, but I'm thinking that next support really on the uh, ES down there in the 40s. Right now, bouncing 55s, trying to push back up here, 55s. Shorts getting covered down there after that move down. The NASDAQ, I mean, the NASDAQ just got murdered there, but I guess the ES pretty much following that. We got that next pivot on the SPY down at the 393.72 level. So that pivot from earlier acting as resistance, we broke the downside. We got, I mean, almost, what, 20 handles there down in the 50s. So a nice little move if you're short. Nice work, nice work.
And yeah, that was pretty much a morning session here. Nice little move up. We got the move up and then that move down there. And it's currently 11-11. All right. More questions? You got any, is there any more questions in the uh, Discord or anything, Bruce? No, I think um, we uh, we answered them on, on the VWAP there. Uh, Perfect. <coughs> well, if you guys want to learn more about Bookmap, they have the website. They got the the Black Friday deal going on right now, 50% off your first month. They've got the Discord. There's a lot of traders. I think there's what, like... 17,000 people in the bookmap discord as well. So if you guys want to learn more about discord, I mean, learn more about the bookmap discord. I know there's links there in the description, links on their website. I know Bruce is in there every day. There's a lot of people with information about bookmap. If you want to kind of ask questions, figure out kind of what to set up your bookmap. For me, I keep my bookmap just really simple. I got the iceberg orders on there. We got, you know, pretty much for me, I'm just watching these areas of liquidity and there we are at the 50s now, touching down the 50, 50, 50s. And you can see after 50, 50, if you're short from here, you know, your target's kind of like down there 48s um, from there. So down to the 49s, some stops getting ran right there. Shorts trying to hammer this thing down. They want that 40 break. Like I said earlier, we're looking for that 40 area uh, after this break from the 50s. So there it is. If you guys want to learn more, Check out the book map discord, the website and get all the deals. There's a link there in the chat box, but fun little morning. We got some action, made some money today. If you want to learn more, there's the deals. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Patrick. So uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I just uh, uh, sh shared the uh, uh, link for you guys. Uh, just go to bookmap.com. Uh, and then once you're here, just click on the uh, uh, hero image here. It'll take you to the bookmap.com slash Black Friday. Uh, and uh, you can get 50% off. Uh, use the uh, coupon code in here. Uh, it's for the first month only. So it, it's really for those that, you know, always inquire and want to try bookmap, give it a try. This is it. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, get, get half off for that first month. Uh, and check it out, see what you guys think. Uh, data is not included, uh, but uh, you can get uh, rhythmic data from our bookmap marketplace or DX feed data for futures uh, for like $39 a month. That's pretty reasonable for just uh, a pretty quality futures data. Uh, and then if you want to keep going with it and get uh, kind of full version like what Patrick has there, uh, you can get the uh, MBO bundle uh, that shows the stops and the iceberg transactions. Uh, right there on the chart, which uh, offers uh, a, another level of transparency uh, and insight. So uh, uh, it's up to you, uh, whatever uh, it is that uh, uh, you're you're looking for uh, to gain an edge here in the market. Um, so uh, I, any other questions in here, Patrick? I don't see anything. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Jinping Tan, how to see the stops and icebergs. You can see them there on uh, Patrick's chart. Uh, the blue, uh, those are iceberg transactions, and the red are stops. Um, it would probably be best to uh, come to one of our uh, webinar events that we have uh, daily. Uh, just go to our YouTube channel. Uh, this week, we don't have them. We have the, the pro trader webinars with uh, uh, traders like Patrick. Uh, so, uh, But we'll cover the stops and icebergs in detail. Uh, there's also uh, links uh, from the um, uh, knowledge base that you can find out more information uh, on the stops and icebergs. I can show that here really quickly. Uh, just go to uh, bookmap.com uh, and then click here more. Go to knowledge base uh, and then go to add-ons section in the knowledge base. And you can see stops and icebergs. All the, all the add-ons we have are here on the left margin. So you can see quite a few. Uh, and most of them are included uh, free within the Bookmap Global Plus version. So that um, Black Friday link, uh, if, you, if you have Global right now but you want to try Global Plus, uh, then upgrade. Uh, you can still get that 50% off for the first month. 
Stops and icebergs are not included in it, though. This is a very exclusive um, or separate uh, add-on indicator. Uh, it's only for futures, and you have to have rhythmic data. So that's why we separated it, because there's all sorts of stock traders, or maybe you're trading Eurex or whatever. They don't offer those things. So um, that's why we separated them out. Um, Patrick, uh, anything else you want to go over? or? Uh, uh, I mean, look where we're at, 40s there. So like I said, breaking through the 50s now, down in the 40s, that support, I think we can go kind of lower into the 40s, but that was, yeah, a nice little session. I feel like the last time we did a little webinar where we went sideways and then today we got some good actions. So great to kind of show everybody the power of Bookmap in a you know volatile moving market. And yeah, I'm using the Bookmap every day on my streams and during my trading and I've found a lot of, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, a, a lot of value out of what you're getting kind of displaying the liquidity in the markets. Because again, the market's moving based on these liquidity levels. The market's moving based on, you know, are there more buyers? Are there more sellers? And what is going on with the uh, overall kind of demand, supply and demand? The market, you know, is moving based on supply and demand. And I think, well, there we go. 47's losing that. We're going lower. 46 is, oh my gosh. I got to get back into a trade. I'm out. Yeah. But yeah, I'm good. Thanks a lot uh, for having me on, Bruce. And, and hopefully everybody's green and having a good day. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much, Patrick. Um, and uh, good, good webinar. Nice, beautiful move in the beginning there. Like you said, easy. Uh, love those kind of trades. Uh, so uh, uh, nice reading of the uh, liquidity there. Thank you, thank you. We'll do it again soon. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care.